Karen. Yes. What do you feel about potpourri? It smells nice. It sm smells nice. Yes. Potpourri is a uh, an essence that helps you to bring out the best part of your life. That potpourri just it's a mixture of a whole bunch of things and just makes things so much better. And it makes your room smell nice. Okay, so today's guest has nothing to do with potpourri other okay. than the fact that uh, that we're diving into a potpourri of nice? stuff. I, I, I guarantee you he probably does. But the ironic thing is that the potpourri coming from a single individual mm -hmm. is uh, brings a dimension to our guest that probably hasn't been felt before. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, he's going to talk to us about a specific diet that changes life about his defection from the Catholic Church and why he defected, and even going to touch on, get this, a 10,000-year-old light or energy being of Arcturian descent named Orna. That's a lot for one show. Potpourri. <laughs> <laughs> now, his goal is to help spread a message of love and peace, a message that's right up our alley. So if you resonate with the love and light movement, then you are definitely in the right place because this episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians starts now. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey there, I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And today we are thrilled to welcome a man who was born into a Protestant family and converted to Catholicism. Ooh. Well, sadly, he began suffering from depression at age 15, not necessarily because of the Catholic Church, although we'll get into it. Somehow he survived 43 years of chronic mental illness. Wow. Uh huh. Until he discovered a special diet that has allowed him to live symptom free for more than six years now. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, he's since left the Catholic Church and become a channel for a 10,000-year-old light energy being of Arcturian descent named Orna. And Orna is on a mission from Source. And he graciously has agreed to channel her in order to spread her message of love and peace. And he's the author of Words of Orna. I couldn't be more thrilled to welcome Brett Lloyd to the show today. Brett, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing doing very well. Very well, Will and Karen. It's such a pleasure to be here. I fanboying a little bit, I'll have to confess. <laughs> and, well, uh, I got—I do have to admit to everyone listening and everybody watching, and to Karen, who doesn't know a lot about what we're uh, dealing with here. Brett is—he has been—he's probably our biggest supporter. I, I don't think there's a single post or a single episode that he hasn't shared far and wide. Oh. Oh, doesn't matter wonderful. what we put out there, even the crazy stuff. He gets, he, he really pushes us out there. It doesn't matter what it is, he's on board. So, Brett, thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate you. <laughs> that's awesome. You're, you're very welcome. And uh, that support will carry on as long as your podcast continues. Well, oh, then, uh, thank you. I'm not sure you know what you're getting yourself into because this is on for the <laughs> long haul, my friend. So, you step yourself in. Here we go. Well, they haul right. us away, which could be next week. You never know. <laughs> right. Uh, I actually have an appointment with a doctor tomorrow. So we're not going to worry about that. Right? <laughs> uh, all right, Brett, I, I don't even know where to begin. You are, we talked about a potpourri at the beginning. You've got so many different facets to you. But I think probably the first place we want to talk to you about, the first like level set of it all is this diet, right? You have experienced serious health concerns that were all wiped away clean the minute you started on this diet. Tell us about this. Well, uh, it was one of the most beautiful things and most unexpected things because, hey, you hear about fad diets and try this, try that, et cetera. And I just, I'd been sick for so many years, for decades, and I was just tired. I didn't like being crazy. I did not like it at all. I took my meds as prescribed. I did everything I was asked to do, and it just got worse over the years. Mm. And I was fortunate enough to uh, catch a Jordan Peterson cutout from when he was on Joe Rogan, and he was describing how his daughter, Michaela, had figured out if she only ate beef, salt, and water, well, her chronic arthritis and depression symptoms vanished. 
And if it's anybody but Jordan Peterson saying this, I'd probably change the channel because, you know, just eating meat by itself, that's crazy. It is crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. So did you say beef, salt, and water or meat, salt, and water? Meat. Uh, okay. Beef, salt, beef, salt, and water for Michaela. That was that was how she does it. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I, I only ate lean ground beef and bacon because that's what my body craves. I've been eating mm. that meal for three times a day since December of 2018 Gosh. when I discovered that really satisfies my physiology. Wow. See, now I crave bacon and ground beef. But I also crave the French fries that go with it on the burger. Well, that's I mean, it's <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I actually crave donuts. Well, that's true. Uh, but a do an old donut uh, diet may not be the best thing for Did anybody. You say all donut or old donut? Uh, either one, actually. They're both. <laughs> no, old it, donut it, is not necessarily a good donut. They'll both lead to a downfall for sure. Old or all. But well, so I want to I want to hear how this can. It sounds like the opposite of what everybody says. So explain to us how is this how does this work. Well, it's, it's really simple. Number one, when you stop consuming inflammatory materials, your body will start focusing on healing. When you're eating inflammatory materials, your body's spending all of its time and energy working to keep that away from your organs hmm. so you don't die. And yeah. a lot of this processed food stuff with the shelf enhancers and all that kind of stuff. And the, the sugar, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. sugar, well, sugar is the worst, most addictive drug on yeah. planet earth in my experience. And, uh, I just, listen, I was so desperate when I learned about this, if somebody with any kind of credibility at all had said, Hey, go get out to your, go find an alley and get the three ugliest rocks you can find and chew on those for a while. I would have tried it <laughs> because I was that wow. desperate to get away from this horrible mental illness that was just dominated my life in ways that was just, well, I don't want to, I want to keep this a positive discussion. Let's sure. just say it's the opposite of the guy you're talking to now. Right. That's what it was like. Right. Well, I, I am sorry to hear about your your challenges, but I do feel like you're kind of uh, describing our show, right? Three crazy rocks. I'll chew on it and make sure whatever <laughs> you tell you know. me to do, it might help. So, well, uh, I'm pretty excited about this meat situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to hear more about that. Um, I eliminated 43 years worth of chronic depression, major depression with psychotic features, chronic anxiety, and chronic insomnia. And my symptoms have never come back. Okay, let me just clarify. You're saying that just by eating meat, salt, and water, that's all mm -hmm. you eat, that cleared away all of your health concerns? Absolutely. 100%. It took time. It didn't all happen at the same time. The morning of August 9th, 2018 was the morning my depression symptoms vanished. Wow. Not that you're <laughs> keeping track or anything. Yeah, not that I... Well, <laughs> Along those lines, today is my 22nd, 154th consecutive day of only eating meat and only drinking water. And I've had exactly zero cheat days. Zero. Wow. Wow. Well, you know what? I'd, I'd be impressed if you know how many minutes and seconds left, actually. No, to no. This point. I, I mean, <laughs> That's so, pretty impressive overall, was actually. It, was it hard to get rid of all of the other stuff? I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm half Hispanic and bread is like a thing. I think mm -hmm. they would kick me out, I think, if, if I didn't eat. Like, ha, I don't know if I could I, give that up. I was very low carb for two years before I learned about carnivore, and I lost 104 pounds doing that uh, from 2015 to summer or uh, late May 2018. Mm. And I started carnivore July 16th, 2018. And on the 24th day, my depression symptoms vanished. In six months, the anxiety was completely resolved. And in 10 months, the insomnia was gone. And as long as I continue to eat this way, I never, ever have to worry about any symptoms ever cropping up again. Right. Okay. So I, I, oh. fe I feel like I kind of have to do put a disclaimer here because um, before you go on this, any kind of diet, you should definitely check with your doctor before you do that. We're not, we're not proposing that you stop eating anything other than meat. Um, but this kind of has a sense of sense if a that sense. makes sense. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> when when we talk to the Ayurvedic diet person, mm -hmm. they mentioned that there's three doshas. 
right? There's one dosha that uh, thrives on just vegetarianism, mm -hmm. another dosha that thrives on that they, they have to have a certain amount of meat, and there's a the third dosha that actually uh, really does well on uh, on a very meat heavy diet. So it really depends on your body type, that, which is why I say go see either your doctor or Ayurvedic practitioner or something. Because for me, when I did the test, I did have a dosha that needed some protein, some animal protein mm -hmm. in order to be aligned. What do you say to people who, I mean, there is in this space, especially everybody's talking about being a vegetarian. Right, that's the vegan, like even more. vegan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only way forward. So, as a carnivore, my friend, how do you respond to people in the space that speak to you can't be metaphysical, spiritual if you eat animals? I disagree with that 110 percent because I thought you might. Uh, well, it, paleo anthropology shows what the human species consumed for thousands and thousands of years. I'm talking tens of thousands of years. We know from their ancient burial grounds what they ate. And it, the diet was primarily meat. It was heavy meat-based diet. Now, today, the genetics have changed a bit in that several hundred thousand years. And I have never and will never say this is the way everybody should eat because human physiology is specific to the individual. Mm -hmm. Very and so. what works for me is not necessarily going to work for thee. Right. And so, you know, I, you've probably seen my Instagram. I, it, it goes back almost to my day one of my journey. And uh, <laughs> I've never advocated that I, I, encourage people if they're sick and tired of being sick and tired to give it a try. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if they've had long-term illnesses and they've followed their doctor's directions and they're just not getting any better, it's worth looking into because people aren't aware. We've been taught to eat a lot of things mm -hmm. that humans should never put into their mouth except to fend off total starvation. Right. Right. Because they're and, inflammatory. And, you know, interestingly enough, I have a degree in anthropology and just remembering my studies, like there were like a couple different, um, I don't want to say trees, but uh, evolutionary developments where, you know, we had the canines and we had all of the meat eating things. And we were essentially vultures for a while. We would eat the prey that was already you know, half dead and eaten from the whatever. But then there were the others um, that had like the bigger jaws and the, the big, um, the the, where the, oh, I can't remember the name of it, the sagittal crest, I think is what it's called, where the, the muscles connect to the top, of height. <laughs> to the top <laughs> of the skull because the jaws needed that much power to be able to crush nuts and to eat that sort of thing. So it was almost like two different sort of which, lineages. Which goes right along with what you're just talking about, Ayurveda, right? The three different doshas, yeah. the different and types of eating. Saying, yeah. it's, it's really interesting what yeah. you're saying. Hey, it might work for some, it might work not work for some. And that totally depends on your physiology and your makeup, I'm right. assuming. Well, just like, in, just like in spirituality, the show is meant to follow different paths. This is just another path you can go if mm -hmm. you feel, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, well, this is another option you can look at and see if it might make sense for you. That's perfect. And really, there is nothing like a bacon-wrapped filet mignon. I'm just going to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> darling. Put that out there. You're, <laughs> you're, pre you're singing my song. <laughs> filet mignon's what I have when somebody else is buying my steak. Oh, right. <laughs> ah, yeah. Right. So right. what's a typical day for you eating? Like breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It, it's, it's it's the same thing. I have breakfast. I have a 10-ounce ground beef patty uh, that's 90-10 uh, uh, mm -hmm. protein to fat. And then I have five or six slices of bacon. The thicker, the better. And uh, for lunch, I have the, the only difference is in breakfast, I cook with beef tallow and bacon grease. And salt, all obviously. And mm -hmm. then for lunch, it's just bacon grease and salt. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still the same 10, 10 ounce patty. Now, for dinner, I have a 93 7 ground beef patty. Okay. And, and bacon. So and that's, that's it. You're talking about bacon grease and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, instinctively, you think, oh, that's like a heart attack waiting to happen, or you're going to gain a ton of weight, but <laughs> it's know. just the opposite. I mean, right? look, okay, so I don't have my glasses on, full disclosure, but in this blurry <laughs> state, you look really healthy. I mean, you're not like this, what you would expect should, from someone who says they just eat meat and bacon all day long. 
I feel amazing. And I've got lab work that says I'm in no danger of anything. Wow. Uh, my inflammation is so low, I have less than a 0.04% chance of ever having a cardiovascular event. Wow. Okay. I got to ask, what what do you consider to be inflammatory foods? Is it vegetables or plant-based? Uh, or uh, Plants? See, if the human digestive system, especially mine, it, it cannot digest cellulose. And so when I would eat something, made with cellulose in it, I had problem, you know, internal pain, cramps. Uh, I used to get doubled over, <laughs> be walking along the house and all of a sudden, no, you're not standing up anymore. Lean over now and be oh. in agony. Uh, and it would be an internal thing. I know, I know now it was related to my digestive tract. Mm. And, uh, you know, I just ate, I grew up, my mom and dad had an enormous vegetable garden. We had fresh vegetables year round, but we also had plenty of meat and starch, et cetera. And out of the four of us, my baby sister just recently, well, she's almost died once from uh, diverticulitis. Mm -hmm. And she just recently had to have her appendix removed because it started leaking. It almost killed her. That sounds terrible. Uh, not only that, it's just a visual. It's just awful. awful. Mm -hmm. wow. my, my, my dad suffered from type 2 diabetes, and, and he passed away in 2020, right when the COVID started mm -hmm. going crazy. And uh, my mom had numerous autoimmune issues through her life. She's doing a lot better now because I finally convinced her to stop eating sugar at the the rate she was and she's she gets around really well now she's 86 years old and lives in north carolina and, and she's thriving and uh that's great i wish i wish i could tell her about all the cool things that have been happening as far as warren is concerned but that wouldn't sit well with her and at her age there's no point in <laughs> she's not going to change and i don't want to upset her right but, course, understood yeah. well i guess we should start talking about Orin because we've been talking mostly about food which i love because i cook a lot but this is metaphysicians well, is in the show name. Well, yeah. it's a, it's a good transition here, kind of, sort of, because we're talking about the carnivore diet. And mm -hmm. in this space, like I mentioned, most people feel that the only way forward, the only way that you can expand or open up to these types of beings is to have a very clean, what they consider clean lifestyle, including diet. So you are the epitome of a complete in your face, motherfuckers, <laughs> about, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, you don't have to Absolutely, be. Absolutely, damn it. We're not going to change. Right, right. So tell us about how did you suddenly uh, manage to, like, how did you and Orna connect? Yeah. Okay. I, I got to give you some of the backstory for that in order for it all to make sense. Okay. I was raised Protestant. Uh, then... At the age of 30, let's see, I was 36, 35 when Daniel and I got married. Okay, so I was, I was 40, 41, and my wife and I converted to Catholicism, which we were very sincere about. Mm -hmm. And then life went on and things were pretty good, but I always had these questions in the back of my mind, you know? Cain and Abel story. Every time I heard it, I was always like, okay, there was Cain, Abel, Adam and Eve. Cain kills Abel. Cain gets thrown out of the Garden of Eden. And the first thing he does is he gets a wife. Yeah, he happens upon a village. <laughs> Where the hell did she come from? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And, and then my wife and I saw in, in the late winter of 2023, we saw this documentary called Ancient Apocalypse that's uh, narrated by a gentleman named Graham Hancock. And there was all this history being shown to, to us that was far older than anything we had ever heard about. And that sparked our curiosity. And along the way, we learned that the ancient Sumerian texts that are six to 10,000 years old or older have some of the same stories that are in the modern Bible. And I'm like, how do you make that work? 
And then you start learning about, well, maybe we weren't created by a divine being exactly. Maybe we were, we had our DNA altered so that we could be good worker bees. Mm. And the evidence just kept piling up. And I, after, and then we got a Gaia account and we really went to hell then. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, at one point I just looked at my wife, uh, in early May of 2023, and I said, I can't go to Mass anymore. It would be a lie for me to go there because there's just too many questions that they're not going to answer. And it's not the priest's fault. The priest is only doing what they were trained to do. I didn't have a problem with that. It's just I couldn't honestly go back. Right. It just didn't and, resonate with you. Yeah, it just stopped resonating with me altogether. And after a couple of weeks of not going anywhere, I realized, hey, we need we need a community. And started doing a search and found this church. The name, it kept coming up in my Google searches. And I just kept thinking, well, that name's just too far out there. Please. <laughs> but it was the only one that made sense to, to, to investigate. And it's called the Cosmic Church of Truth. Oh, it's right that, here in Jacksonville, Florida. That is pretty far out. That is. Cosmic it is. Church of Truth. And my wife and I went thinking it won't hurt to go one Sunday. And I knew... Five seconds into walking through that door, getting hugged by people I never knew. They were thrilled to death to see us. One lady yelled out, all right, new energy. <laughs> and, and, Are you sure she didn't say new meat? No. She didn't. <laughs> believe me, believe me. They had I, I was the first carnivore those folks had ever met. I okay. promise. Right. Probably. <laughs> and, and my wife, who's, who's not the extrovert that I am, she's more of an introvert. She doesn't like going to new places. She's not a big fan of meeting new people. But even she was like, this is like where we should have always been. Where you belong. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. It's, a, it's a metaphysical church. And on Friday nights, they have a mediumship circle class. And my wife and I were drawn to that, like, right from the start. <clears throat> and I was patient with myself. I knew I didn't know what I was doing. I had, knew it was going to take a long time for me to learn and figure out how to get in the state of mind where I could see things, where I could give messages, where I would get impressions off of people, et cetera. And six weeks went by, and I didn't see squat, and I didn't hear squat, but my wife did. Welcome to my life, little brat. Yeah, and Welcome was, to my life. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I've been patient. Hmm, what do I need to do differently? And then I had never meditated before in my life. In fact, prior to this time in my life, I thought meditation, as I understood it, was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. I used to laugh at the idea. You're just going to sit there and not have any thoughts in your head. Ooh, that's productive. <laughs> that, was, that was my thinking, which was just so wrong. Yeah. I know. And I started, I realized I was going to have to try to learn how to meditate. Mm -hmm. And I started with three and five minute guided meditations on YouTube and got it up to 20 minutes and then finally got to where I could meditate on my own for 20 minutes without a guidance. And, you know, all those beautiful things happened. You learned about, you learned the names of your spirit guides and your guardian angel. And it, that was all very beautiful. And the next Friday night class, which was the 4th of August of last year, I thought, I'm going to treat this class like a meditation instead of the way I had been treated. And smartest decision, first really good decision I'd made since I married my wife. And <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that part of it, Brett, because, you know, you know, she's listening right now. <laughs> Will, as you well know, safety first. Heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> happy wife, happy, happy life. life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. This, you know, the class starts and I'm deep in meditation. And then suddenly on the right side of my mind's eye, this golden wall of energy appears. And I knew that's me. That's awesome. I'm finally seeing something that I couldn't make up or imagine. It's, I'm seeing me. That's great. And then a few moments later, this blue ball of energy appeared right beside it. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. What the hell is that? If that's me, <laughs> then who that is that? not me. I don't know what that is. Who? 
And the teacher of the class had always said, if you see something, hear something, feel something, you don't understand or that freaks you out, bring it to the group. And so I brought to the group what I was seeing and experiencing. And she just said, well, I, you know, there might be some channeling in the future or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking, channeling? Me? I do that Please. all the time with my remote control. I go <laughs> channel to channel to channel. But, Man, that's you know, surfing. I had seen the channelers on Gaia. I mm -hmm. found them interesting. Mm -hmm. But did, was this something that I had ever? No. I, that was, you know, with my history of illness and I'm a musician, you know, I'm, Who's going to want me, an old broken down guitar player, to be their mouthpiece? That just did not, that made no sense. And then about five minutes later, a very talented young man, whose name is Drew, who I owe a great debt of gratitude to, he says, Brett, I want you to know that standing on your left is an extraterrestrial with sapphire colored eyes. That and they want you. They want you to know that if you're willing, you can make a connection with them and they will connect with you joyfully. Well, I gave you a lot of credit because I would not have waited till that part of it. All he had to have said is there's an extra trust over your shoulder and I would have been running down the hallway. Like I would not have heard the rest of it because no, no, no. We've talked many times. I'm not it ready for aliens. It was because of that book, wasn't it? I, I, it was. I, I, it was. I, I heard, I, I've heard that about you, sir. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Yet he wants to see the spaceships. But I he do. doesn't want to see who's no. in the spaceships. Right. He doesn't want to see the pilot. No. I'm not ready for that yet. I mean, well, you know, you. there's no, when it's your time that you are ready, it'll happen. I'm afraid that when it's my time, we're talking about a different type of time, right? <laughs> it'll be your time. It'll give you a heart attack. Right. If I see an alien, it's my time to go, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Because well, I think they'll know you and they'll present themselves very calmly to you. Mm. They're not going to come until you're ready. That's correct. I'm, I'm kind of just making that up. Oh, yeah. No, that's actually correct. That's <laughs> actually correct. I, the reason the reason that Orna was able to connect with me that night was because I was meditating. I was actually vibrating high enough for her to make the connection. Right. And right. when when the gentleman said that, I thought my intuition was going to literally jump out of my stomach and turn around and look at me and yell, do it. <laughs> Say yes. So wait, was this extraterrestrial Orna that was over your shoulder? I was, uh, yeah. Well, she was right beside of me. Aww. And uh, yes, that was when I could. I said yes. And that's when I made the connection with Orna and I learned who she was. And that was the strangest ride home of my life because I'm thinking I'm, I'm not asking a lot of questions because I, 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 I understand sort of kind of what happened here, but this is not what I went to church that day thinking I was going to experience. <laughs> you know, I went with me and my wife. I thought that was all who would be coming back with us. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the haunted house ride I, at Disney I was World. Just gonna go there. The little ghost yeah. comes back uh, in your car. With I was you. just gonna go there. <laughs> and and you know my my biggest concern at that moment was how do I convince my wife I haven't lost my mind again? Well, how did you convince yourself? I mean, did it when when you started communicating? Did it sound like a different voice? Did you think it was just you having these thoughts? What, what was no, that like? It, it was it was very real. There was never a doubt in my mind about the validity of what was happening, what I was seeing, hearing, and experiencing. So you were seeing also? Well, I, did, I, I was seeing her energy uh, field out around me is what I was seeing. Okay. Orna, Orna, Orna is, is a light energy being. She has no physical body. Oh. And... Um, you know, my wife, my wife, <laughs> the day I introduced Orna to the church, which was August 25th, uh, my wife shared that she thought it was three possibilities. Excuse me. One, I was either the greatest con man in history, but she couldn't figure out how Drew worked into that because he and I didn't really know each other. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know where he lived or anything. And. She couldn't make that work. And then the other one was that I went crazy again. <laughs> but as she told the church, I've seen him crazy for years. He wasn't that kind of crazy. <laughs> He's a different type of crazy. <laughs> Dif 
And she said, so the third possibility was this all very true and, mm -hmm. and it's real. And right. so that's what she went with. Right. Uh, the interesting thing about that is, is, okay, that was on a Friday night. On Mondays, my wife and I work at the same place. She's a, a production manager at a print shop, making T-shirts, mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And I, I go there on Mondays and, and work. I do the dirtiest job they have, but that's what, how we make the car payment. Mm -hmm. And uh, right as we're walking out the door to get in the car to go to work, Orna says to me, I must speak to your wife on the way to work. Oh, oh, no, it no, must wow. uh, you got no evidence, right? No, no pictures, no video. You can't prove no, anything. No. <laughs> Leap of faith, baby. And I'm thinking, oh, this will be different because we hadn't discussed <laughs> channeling. We had, she didn't tell me what I needed to do or anything. She just said, just relax. It'll be fine. And my wife's driving and I said, okay, Orna needs to tell you something. And she kind of glanced out of her eye. Like she's trying to, okay. And then my vision changed just like that. Uh, suddenly in the top left corner of my mind's eye, I'm looking at my wife in the bottom right corner. I'm seeing the dashboard in front of me and I hear Orna start to talk and it sounds like it's 200 yards away. I could barely make out what she's saying, but basically what she told my wife was, don't worry. Your marriage is just as important to me as it is to you. Brett's going to make some mistakes, but he'll never make the same one twice. And there's nothing for you to be concerned or worried about. And my wife said, well, thank you very much for that. And Orna said, have, you know, have a wonderful day. And then things came back and I was like, what the hell was that? And, my, <laughs> my, and I said, so how was that for you? She said, that was very, very strange. And then I'm like, well, if you want to hear strange, let me tell you what I just saw. And, and, but since then, she's, Orna has, she connects with me telepathically. I was hit by a car between the summer of my fifth and sixth grade year in high school. And so this was early 70s. And I had some minor, thankfully minor, brain damage that hasn't caused me any problems that I'm aware of. Uh -huh. And that's how she connects with me hmm. telepathically. I don't have to go through a big process. I mainly just have to close my eyes and get out of her way. Right. And then she comes forward. So you can call her in at any time? I can call her in at any time. I plan on calling her in during this discussion. Before you do that, because I know that's where you're going to next, I've got to call something out. Two things, really. We've heard many times before, a lot of times uh, a head injury of some sort, a head injury of some sort does tend to bring something like this out. So it makes perfect sense when that uh, that that would have happened. But you said something early on that I want to really call out because I want to make sure that people who are hearing this right now or watching this really connect with. You mentioned that your wife thought one of the possibilities was that you were going crazy again. And you've mentioned something along those lines several times through this interview. And I, I just want to make sure that I point out nobody knows what crazy is. In fact, when someone says someone's crazy, a lot of times we found that the people who feel like they're the most out there are the ones who are most in touch with what's beyond the veil. So I don't think anyone should sit in judgment over anyone who's got some sort of mental health challenge specifically because it could not, it might not be mental health challenge. It might be a connection with something that we, the rest of us aren't in touch with. So I want to make sure I mention that because Knowing, seeing how you, you had the accident when you were younger and you're now channeling Orna, there's a good chance that mm -hmm. this was stuff that was trying to get through and wasn't able to because of your limitations that we set on ourselves. And now that you have allowed this thing to come through, it suddenly becomes much easier or more manageable in that sense, if that makes sense. It does. But, but that being said, and that is absolutely 100%. Yes, I agree. Some people just do have some mental health challenges. 
So we, we don't want to just blanket saying, you know, no, well, don't no, get, no, don't of course. Go to doc, you know, we have to be careful. Go just, to a doctor. Just, the, know, just, just, make sure. yeah, just like I said at the beginning, you should always check with your health professional first before you do mm -hmm. anything or come to any conclusions. But Can I don't you tell we work in TV and have to <laughs> have releases signed and waiver signed I and liability. I understand, I understand exactly why you're saying what you're saying. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, that being said, tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> It, it changed every Orna's presence changed everything for me, and it's all been a hundred percent positive. There's not been a moment of downside to the experience. Right. She so immediately. She, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, to so say you you say she's a she. Mm -hmm. How did you know? Is it did she tell you? Did you just? She told me. Oh. She told me, and I have learned. One of your past guests explained this to me that um, I I prefer and attract female energy. Oh, I, I mean, I, versus masculine, and uh, uh, you know, or it just happened to you know wasn't anything like I said. Right. Yeah, really. I didn't have any clue that any of this was going to take place. And sure. She's right. what she is. And I've never had any reason to doubt what she tells me because everything right. she has told me that would happen along the way has occurred so far. She explained to me early on, I understand in your culture that no one's really going to listen to your channeling if there's not a book. Mm. Interesting. And so that's why you wrote the book, then. That's the main reason, yes. And uh, because all the all the uh, can't get on any of those other big, big time podcasts if you don't have at least one book, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, the more the better. Right. So that's that is the gateway to our show. Actually, if you don't have a book, then I, we can't be bothered. So I mean, <laughs> so that's why he wrote the book is oh, to get on our yeah. show. I'm but not sure don't you ask us about our book. No, we have we no don't book. We have a book. No. <laughs> We live precariously off of other people's books. Is that precariously? That's no, not the right word, is it? <laughs> by the precarious situation. We can live. We do actually live quite quite precariously. So that yes. might actually still qualify. But mm -hmm. all right. Uh, well, <laughs> I I know I know Karen. I, I'm my ankle is killing me because she's been kicking it for so long now. So I'm I've just gotta. Let's go ahead and hey. Do you think Orna might want to come out and play? Orna will come out and she'll be happy to take a couple of questions from each of you. And I think she's even got a message for everybody today. Ooh, perfect. Oh, great. Well, we'd love to start with that and then go from there. All right. Just give me a moment here to get out of her way and she'll come through. Sounds good. And I'll warn you in advance. When I'm channeling her, I have almost completely no idea what she's saying. I don't hear it. Uh, once you, in a while, I might feel an emotion or something, especially if she says something funny. <laughs> do you remember, like at, at the end of channeling, do you recall what was said? Very, very little. And the further away from the channeling I get, the, the less I remember. Wow. Well, good news, Brett. We're recording this so you can hear it <laughs> back eventually. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. All right. All right. Let me, let me get in the right place here. Good evening. I am Orna. How may I serve you? Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I was not expecting your voice to be so light and airy. It's beautiful. Thank do you, you. Do you have a question? Always. I have lots okay, of questions. you go first. Orna, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming out and speaking with us. Uh, the, the biggest question that we ask anyone who comes through is in this time of, uh, chaos and challenges and things like that, what is, what is in store for humanity, humanity in the next few years? It, it, are we doomed or is there a way to get around and right size our civilization moving forward? Humanity's on a precipice at this time. All the old 
established ways of thinking, the old, the old ways of imagining are no longer working. Much of humanity has been manipulated into despising and disliking one another for various reasons, most of which have no validity, but the powers of manipulation have been so, so sadly in effect for many hundreds, even thousands of years in some cases, different parts of the planet. But humanity will overcome already People are understanding and waking up in greater and greater numbers. They're becoming aware that something's just not right anymore. That the old normal has become horribly abnormal. That the institutions that have managed and manipulated humans are no longer effective. Humanity will rise out of this current situation, hopefully with minimal to no bloodshed. Humans will contribute to the ascension of planet Earth to the fifth dimension because over time, love will permeate the planet. Love will be on the tip of everyone's tongue, for love is truly the universal tool. Love is always the ultimate answer to every question. I hope this answer suffices. If you have another question, please yeah. ask. So my question might be a little more selfish, but as of late, I have felt a loss of my purpose. And I guess what I would like to know is what I can do to help bring forth this love. Humans, especially in the Western civilization, seem to have a problem learning to love themselves. And if you can't love yourself, how in can you possibly express love to another being? My recommendation to you for your purpose, don't try to figure it out. Instead, meditate and ask the universe to bring your purpose to you when you're ready to receive it. And when you are ready to receive it, receive it, you shall. And you will become the beautiful flower you were always meant to blossom into spiritually. Be patient. There is more to be gained by waiting with joy in your heart than there is frustrating yourself, trying to get to a place that you're not prepared to reach. Continue meditation, continue positive thinking and controlling your thoughts. Your gifts will blossom and you will soar. Do you have any other questions? Well, Brett mentioned that you might have a message for us or our audience. Do you have something that you need to share with us? Thank you. I very much would like to share with all who are hearing and all who are seeing this discussion to remember love is the answer to every solution. It's the answer to every problem. It is the solution. Never be afraid to apply love to any situation. Remember, you are the creator of your reality. 
And just think for a moment, if just five people got together and created a reality together around love, how powerful, how beautiful that would be to behold. Humans, you are blessed with enormous power that you have been manipulated into forgetting. It's time to wake up and remember what you really are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience and you are in control. Follow love. Love never misleads. Trust love. And be at peace always with your brothers and sisters. That is our message for today. So as a follow-up to that, Warna, you know, I'm sure, that in this world nowadays, it's very difficult sometimes to feel love for the other person when there's so much division. When you are confronted with someone who's coming at you from a place of non-love, it's very difficult to respond in love, but instead you automatically respond in kind because that's what we've been conditioned to do. So I know you've mentioned come with love in every situation, but how would you recommend someone in a 3D reality do that when it's so difficult sometimes to keep that top of mind? The first thing I would recommend is to develop a meditation practice. Meditation is the doorway to source. It's the doorway to the universe. It's the path to becoming what you were meant to become. And in your meditations, ask for the strength to control your thoughts. Brett recognized one day that everything he had ever destroyed that he loved, he had done so with anger. And as an example, he chose to ask Source to limit his ability to create anger and to replace the energy that he was expending on anger and instead ask he asked for more peacefulness and more thoughtfulness. Humans can and need to learn to control their thoughts. For every thought is a form of energy. And when you think an angry or negative thought, it comes out into the universe and attracts like energy and then brings it back to you. Conversely, when you think a positive thought, the same thing occurs. Control your thoughts. Focus on the light and love of source. Focus on positive thinking. No matter how difficult a time you might be having in the course of your life, you've always got something to be thankful for. Focus on what you have to be thankful for. And that can lead you closer to the path of discovering the love of source which is infinite and always present if we just take the time to accept it. Yeah, and there's no doubt that we have a lot to be grateful for, mm -hmm. a lot to be grateful for. So, and I'm most grateful for you coming and speaking with us today. Orna, this has been wonderful. Um, thank you for taking the time and for the guidance and wisdom that you have shared with us today. 
Thank you for this opportunity to share regarding love. Peace and light be with you both always. And I hope our paths cross again one day and I may share another message when it's appropriate. I'm going to step out of the way now and let Brett come back. Fare thee well. Thank you. So well, what, you're, all not, you're all not crying. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel when you channel? Is it, is there, is it, like, where do you go? I'm in a quiet, restful place of stillness, quiet. I mean, it, and, and when I really enjoy, like right now, the moment, this moment is when I feel the joy from channeling. It is truly, and seeing the smiles on, on Karen's face and your face, it just, that's, that's, that's my gift. That's my payback. Right, right. And it's, it's always beautiful. It's always wonderful. I have no idea what in the hell she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was definitely speaking my language because it was all about love. Yeah. And she said For, that you were going to pay us $15,000 uh, over the next. <laughs> and love uh, doing that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys she had a great sense of humor. <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What does that mean? <laughs> No, uh, she knows what's in my bank account and what's in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not a Capital One uh, commercial. Just to clarify, this is that show is not sponsored by Capital One in any way, shape, or form. But I do no matter what's in your wallet, I do have one question. Could you feel her energy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, almost immediately, mm -hmm. it was definitely palpable. You definitely feel that's it. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that always please. That's always so pleasing to me. Yeah. When people get can feel her energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was it, the, the the interesting thing. The very first thing that Karen said was like, "Whoa! I did not expect to f hear you sound like that." So I don't know what we expected, but we just figured, you know, yeah, just Brett giving us some wisdom. But it was it was more than that. Yeah. No, it wasn't my wisdom for sure. <laughs> I'm that smart. All right. All right. Well then, let's. Um, we're we're almost out of time, but I definitely want to talk about your book because mm -hmm. you said that uh, no one would take you seriously as a channel if you didn't have a book. So there you you're holding it up. Yeah. That's perfect. Tell us about what. Why should someone buy uh, the book that you've written? Well. Technically, I didn't write a word except for the preface. Right. These right. are all Orna's words. Mm -hmm. So and, it's, it's, is, is it a channeled book, like that's, Conversations that's with what, God? That's why, that's why it says on the cover, Channeled by Brett Lloyd. Ah, gotcha. Oh. Okay, got it. And uh, we, we, this book is full of, there's nothing, I would say, that's earth-shakingly new. Mm -hmm. It's just a perspective on offering advice, a different perspective, offering humans advice on how to get to a place where they understand that love is truly the universal tool. And she talks about a number of issues in here. Um, she talks about the importance of families, the power of families in the community and how Strong families create strong, healthy, happy communities, mm. which eliminate a lot of the mm. that we see going on day to day. I hate that. Uh, no, I hate that. Really, that's the you, best word for it. Yeah, it or, is. <laughs> not really word, but sound, whatever. <laughs> I, I, it, it's, I, can't, I can't be around negativity. Yeah. If somebody wants to go on a political rant, I... Even if I agree with half of what they're saying, it's just the anger, the frustration. I got to get away from that. I could not agree with you more. In fact, I think I've unfollowed more people the last six months than I followed my entire life just because I just don't want to be around it. doesn't matter what you're talking. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're spouting that kind of stuff, I, I support you. I'm glad that you have a strong opinion on it. I don't need to see it on my feed. That's it's exactly right. That's how I feel as well. I And 
you know, I know you built, looked at my Instagram. It's as positive as it can be because people are taking the time out of their day to see my content. Where do they want to, they're not coming to see yes. my yeah. negativity. Right. 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 They're, they're coming to see and understand how it is that this old man could eat meat and drink water and not fall over <laughs> dead. <laughs> well, you know, unfortunately so many people are so wrapped up in that whole misery loves company thing, right. you know, so you're upset about something and you find someone else you can commiserate with. But that's just not all that's going to do is just create more misery. Yeah, no, 100%. Like to the point where, Brett, I don't watch the news anymore. I don't like, I, I get my headlines from my news break app. I watch, I read the headlines and go, okay, moving forward. But I don't take it as gospel because at the end of the day, I know how I feel. I know what's important to me and I know what direction I'm heading in. I don't need to convince anyone because I tried that. And it was a <laughs> devout it failure. Was ugly. <laughs> it was awful. Uh, so the, the more centered I am, the more I realize just be and love mm -hmm. and uh, don't allow that fear or mm -hmm. anger or negative emotions around your sphere because all that's going to do is make you feel icky. And I don't want mm -hmm. that. And the problem is we all try to, you know, you want to change someone's mind. And at the end of the day, you're not, especially at our age, that's just not going to happen. Never they can gonna, change their minds, but they need to come to it on their own. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what something we do. Doesn't matter what you say. You are never going to change anybody's no, mind. And they're going to like like hold tight and even come back stronger. Like, right. Nope. Yep. Nope. That's exactly. why my advice has always been: be the best example you can possibly yes. be, in hopes right. that yes. others will recognize and follow. Absolutely. And the only other thing I would add to that is: look. You heard it from Brett. You heard it from Orna. You've heard it from us repeatedly over the last 17,000 episodes we've done. Just love. As long as you have love in your heart and you move forward in life with love, then your decision is made for you. Look for what runs your love and that's what you have to go because otherwise... But you have to realize that love isn't always what you think it is. People think about relationships, love, like it's just a man and a woman yes, or yes, a mother yes, yes, and yes. a child. Yes. It's more than that. It's, yes. it's loving the experience we're in. It's loving the feeling of water on your skin. It's loving how you feel when you wake up and it's a beautiful day and you see a pretty bird going by. That's enough. Yes. That feeling, that love is enough. Absolutely. And if we let ourselves just bask in that feeling and just let it saturate you, you're going to just go forth and, and, and promote that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let fear or anger rule you or direct your, 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 your life, yeah. you, uh, you know, dictate your direction. Love is a way forward. That, yeah. that is a way that unifies the entire planet and brings it together. Anger and fear do everything except. And, it's and, and for those in the spiritual community, I learned through a QHT session about my past lives mm -hmm. that confirmed the realities for me of reincarnation mm -hmm. right. and that took away my fear of dying. Right. And once you reach a place where you don't have to be afraid of dying, what is there really to be afraid of? Well, that's a really good point, Brett, because right now there's people a lot of, afraid of a lot of things. Yeah. People are afraid of someone that's different than them. Someone's afraid of a different lifestyle than mm -hmm. them or a way of thinking. In essence, we were put on this planet to experience all different things and ways of life and things. So just love each other, knowing that you're each undergoing the perfect experience that you came down here to experience, allow others to experience and live their lives. That for me is what love is all about. I agree completely, and we will pass the collection plate and then the other side. <laughs> I know, I'm like, we should get <laughs> on our soapbox here. <laughs> that is beautifully been... said. I, was, I agree with everything you said. Yeah. And, and, you know, Orna, Orna is on a mission to, when she's reached every every ear and every eyeball, have seen this, these kinds of discussions, then then – then maybe I can go back to just being a guitar player. Again. <laughs> That's not happening. But until then. Yeah, until right. then, I'm all Orna's. That's for sure. Well, we, we're privileged to have uh, been able to forward Orna's mission, even a slight bit forward. So um, thank you, Brett, for coming on the show. Thank Orna for coming on and sharing her wisdom with us. And if uh, someone wanted to reach out to you, 
uh, to get in contact, get more in alignment with what you're talking about, or maybe reach out and get a reading from Orna or something along those lines. What's the best way for someone to do that? Okay. A person can get a reading from Orna now on Wednesday evenings. Um, and I do also give readings. I am a medium. And uh, you can go to our webpage at spiritlife.space. I'm going to add a link, a direct link directly in the show notes. All you need to do mm -hmm. is go to skepticmanifestation.com, go to Brett's episode page. You'll see the link laid in there directly. So it's super easy to connect. Brett, this and, has been fantastic. And folks could also connect with me uh, in private on Instagram. I'm the thankful.carnivore.medium. And yes, Great. I don't, I answer all my DMs. You'll, you'll never be left hanging. Yeah. And the uh, best thing is if you follow Brett on Instagram, you're going to see him promoting the living crap out of skeptic metaphysicians. So thank you for that. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. But see, I, I really believe in what you all are doing. I love your approach. It's, it's, you guys are truly on a quest for true information and understanding Absolutely. and you're open everything yes and that's so rare you know we've become such a niche society in so many ways absolutely and you are welcome to everything and uh, i appreciate that so much absolutely Thank because you. we know for a fact that everyone's reality is different and for us to say one reality is it it would be incredibly hypocritical for us so Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for um, being such a great supporter. And uh, we hope to, uh, we know we're going to be in touch a lot more. So thanks for everything. I look, for, I look forward to it. And you guys keep doing this great, beautiful work here. And a huge thank you to you. We know that there are tons of options out there. And having you decide to come along on our journey of discovery with us is an absolute honor for us. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing the message we're sharing on the show, do them and us a favor and share the show with them. It will help get the word out about us, and it might just change someone's life for the better. Well, that's all for now. We will see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. <laughs>